Hello there guys, welcome to this video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to take this gray handle and blend it along with the landscape. So if I go ahead and hit render now, you should see that uh, this gray handle just comes out completely gray and the landscape has a texture. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make sure the texture flows in to this object. Now, another thing I also want to do is that because this gray handle is supposed to be a transition from the live object, I want it to fade off. I want it to have an opacity fading off towards the edge where it actually becomes original cylinder. So now, let's go ahead and see how, what all can be done. And by the way, most of the techniques I'm covering in here are actually quite basics of UV mapping, but I'm not going too in depth into them. These are supposed to be intuitive. If you get confused or get uh, have any doubts, you can go ahead and hit me up on the forums and I'll definitely try to solve your issues. But for now, I don't really want to go too much into UV mapping. It's all in itself uh, huge tutorials on their own. So now let's go ahead and get started with this. If I go ahead and check the material attributes on the landscape for now, you should see that it's a simple blend material with a color channel applied. Absolutely everything else is still at defaults. So what I want to do is first apply a blend material onto these handles too because I want them to have similar properties. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll assign favorite material blend and I'll call this a uh, simple handle material. Okay, so I have that. If you want, you can go ahead, rename the shading group. It's totally up to you. Now, once this is applied, I want to apply the same texture which exists on this landscape. To do that, let's go ahead, open up the hyper shade, and here I'll load in the landscape and this remap value which exists, I'll middle click, drag and drop it into the color channel of my handle material. Now, once I've done this, if I go ahead and hit render, there should be absolutely no change, almost no change. The main reason being, if I go into the UV texture editor for this object, you should see that it is nothing but a cylinder. So it's just giving me the same UV mapping, which is there, but it's in the center. It's not actually at the edges as it's supposed to be over here. So it's not going to give me any transition or anything as such. If I wanted to have an actual transition, I have to unwrap both of these objects at the same time. But as you can see, if I select this, this object does not actually extend towards the edges. And if I go ahead and try to apply any planar mapping or anything as such, it's going to try and match up towards the edges and the texture is going to scale. The displacement and color UVs are totally different because displacement is still using the NURBS UV channel. So if you didn't understand what that is, it's absolutely no issues. You can just follow through what I'm doing next. Now, what I'm going to do is just go ahead, apply a planar mapping on both of these objects at the same time. But I want to make sure that the UVs are preserved as much as possible for this landscape object. So to do that, I'm going to create a new plane. I'm using shift right click in the MT section of the viewport. And I created a plane here. I'm just going to scale it up. So it comes up to almost the same level as I see here in the UV grid. So if I select these two objects, you should see that they look almost exactly the same. Now, I for one know that I have to just scale this up to the same extent that scaled up the original NURBS plane. Now, what uh, uh, the amount of scaling I applied to it was about 31.44. The reason I know this is because I actually went ahead to the previous version of the file and this is uh, uh, a plane I have which has been just cut through. I've used the trim operation and as you can see the scale is 3.144. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply the same value to this and that's going to literally give me the exact size of the plane. 444, okay. So this is my prepared material. This is nothing but a placeholder object so that the planar mapping I apply is going to be applied right. Now, uh, all I have to do is apply a simple planar mapping now. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll select all these three objects. So the plane is selected, the trim surface is selected, and also the handle, the cylindrical handle which exists are also selected. I'll go ahead to create UVs, planar mapping, and I just need to apply the mapping and by default, here you have insert projection before deformers turned on. And that might give you issues, so let me show you what issues it might give first. 
I'll set, select that one on and also keep the image width and height ratio. So let's hit project. It might take a little bit of time, especially because project before deformers is selected and you have a very heavy mesh with a lot of deformers added. So give it some seconds. So it applies and gives you some results. Okay, so the planar mapping has now been applied. And if I open the UV texture editor, you should be able to see that the landscape looks almost exactly in the same location. But now my actual objects are in the right place too. Now let me go ahead, hide the plane. I'll turn on textures and let's go to one of these corners and hit render. Now when I hit render, there should be a couple of issues. Like you can see the texture does not actually match up. And also it's kind of hard to see whether if texture is matching, especially because of these specular and diffuse colors. So let's actually go to the material. And here I'm going to change a couple of things. So first thing I'm going to do is remove all specular highlights and all the diffuse. So this gives me a complete black object, but I'm going to increase ambience to four. So this is nothing but a simple flat color pass. So there is absolutely no shading involved now. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing with my actual cylindrical handle. So let me select the handle, go to the material attribute and also you can observe here that there are too many tabs in the attribute editor. This is all the history so I'll just Alt Shift D to delete history because this is the final model. I don't want it to bog down my system. Now let me do the same thing here. I'll remove the diffuse, increase the ambience and now if I hit render it should show me exactly the seam which exists in the UVs. Now this is mainly because I have these soft mod uh, handles here. So let me try and select that. And this soft mod handle is literally affecting this entire region. And because we said while creating the planar map to insert projection before deformers, it's creating the seam. This is the literal UV mapping the landscape had previously, which is not exactly what is going to give me the best results. So I'm going to go ahead and change these properties now. So let me unhide the plane. I'll select these objects once more. So the cylinder, the plane and the landscape. But this time I'm going to remove this insert projection before the formers option. And now I'm just going to go ahead project. And first thing you should observe that is that it actually projects way faster than the default option. So it's finished applying the entire deformer. And this time if I go ahead, do the same render. So let me go back to the same location I was at. I'm just using the bracket keys on my keyboard. Okay, and let me save this and take this. Okay, it's the same section. So let's hide this plane and render this. Okay, so as you can see from the previous to this, the landscape texture has changed a lot. It is now giving me the seamless texture. So it looks a lot better. So what I want to do now is make sure that the material also matches perfectly and there are no the material also matches properly and there are no uh, actual seams in the way the normals are placed. Like as you can see here in this section, the object actually has some deformations in the mesh. It actually has some noise and suddenly it changes into very smooth mesh. So that kind of looks odd. Uh, anyone could tell that this is a sudden seam. So I want to get rid of that. So let's go ahead, isolate this landscape for a second. I'll go ahead, use a soft mod tool. I'll select somewhere exactly here in the center of where my handles are. And once I've selected that, let me decrease the soft mode handle distance. And I'm going to turn off fall off in one of the axes so that it's going through completely in that section, just so I don't have to create additional deformers. And now what I can do is just go ahead and scale this down. So I can just go ahead, scale this down and that flattens out this entire section. So that really creates this smooth mesh. And now let's go ahead, unhide my handle. So this handle. Okay. So as you can see, first thing, the landscape has kind of gone above a bit. So again, I'll just select the soft mod handle and move it down till it matches up. Okay, I'll also increase the soft mods fall off a little bit more. Okay, 
So as you can see, I have a much better transition from the handle to the landscape. If you want, you can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So let me just pause the video while I do this. It's exactly the same which I did on the other side. Okay, so I ended up using two soft mods instead of just one in this section. But it doesn't really matter as long as you get results, you can use any different amount of techniques. So, okay, so I have two different things which I've just done. I've gone ahead and applied textures to both these objects and as you can see the textures are now seamless. But the problem which has occurred right now is that these textures would not match up with the exact landscape we have. Now, I don't really mind uh, this problem because it actually creates some variations. It does not match up the texture with the landscape means there is some variation which will be interesting visually but people would not actually know what's going to happen or why it's happening. So it's pretty good. If I hit render, you should be able to see that there's, there is no seams. And also another thing to note, the reason I have not actually modeled the cylinder out of this mesh is because it's too heavy and to try and modeling it will take too much time. So that's uh, the major reason. Now, once I've actually done this, the next main thing I want to do is I want to give in some transparency to the object so that it does not actually render throughout. I want it to stop after a while. So to do this, I'm going to use uh, make use of transparency maps. So let me just reset these materials. I'll go to the attributes, increase diffuse. It's supposed to be 0.8, you can go change it however you want.